Hi, this is Scott Brown with a Redline Detection Troubleshooting Tech Tip for addressing DTC P0299, which is a turbo underboost fault found on the General Motors 1.4 liter Ecotec engine, RPO LUV. Now P0299 is a type B DTC, which means that the conditions for setting the fault have to occur within two different trips in order for the ECM to declare the DTC and illuminate the malfunction indicator light. So what this means for you as a diagnostician is that you should be looking in the generic OBD2 section of the scan tool for pending DTCs during troubleshooting. Now what I like to do in these situations is to take the vehicle out on a road test and collect some baseline scan data, which can be useful to compare to the follow-up data collected following any repairs performed to the vehicle. Now, according to service information for this vehicle, the ECM monitors for underboost during the following conditions. The diagnostic system is comparing the desired boost versus the actual boost and is looking to flag the fault if the difference exceeds any of these values for longer than two and a half seconds. The scan tool I'm using here allows me to create a histogram table that matches the thresholds table found within the ECM, which I have found to be very, very helpful. The other technique that I've found to be helpful is to place the automatic shift selector into manual mode. And by selecting a higher than normal gear, I'm able to keep the RPM levels fairly steady and allow more time for data collection in each of the engine cells that the ECM is looking at and that uses to flag faults. So as we look at the data from this road test, clearly there's an underboost condition we need to address. The next step is to verify the sealing integrity of the intake track, especially between the turbocharger outlet and the cylinder head. The red line detection speed smoke unit will allow us to check the system sealing integrity fairly quickly. Now for this test, all we need to do is connect the power leads to the 12 volt battery and make a connection to the intake system after the mass airflow sensor. We can do this with the handy red line power adapter now we we'll want to place the power adapter switch in the turbo high pressure position and with the hose connected to the power adapter, select the vapor test and dial in 5 PSI on the regulator and then open the flow control valve and begin inspecting for leaks. Now a word of caution, the intake path includes a flexible hoses and an intercooler so it will take a little bit of time for the system to fill with smoke vapor you'll want to listen and look for leaks at the same time. Now, in some cases, you may have come across a system that has a very, very small leak, and it won't always show you smoke. So you may want to try wiggling the hose connections and see if a leak can be uncovered. Now, in this case, I can hear and see smoke coming from the throttle body area. Checking the screw clamp torque revealed a loose clamp. But before tightening the clamp, You'll want to take note of the leak flow rate so you can see what kind of reductions you're achieving. Now keep in mind that just because you find one leak, that doesn't mean that there might be others. You'll want to visually inspect all the other connections as well and use the flow meter to your advantage. Now most vehicles use special connections that attach to the intercooler and you might try wiggling them while the speed smoke has a system under pressure. When you discover leaks, just tightening the clamp is usually not the best remedy. I recommend that you disassemble and clean each of these areas and inspect them closely. They may have O-rings that need to be serviced, etc. And usually these connections use special clamps that must be placed at specific clock positions and properly torqued to ensure proper sealing. Once you've reassembled, it's always a good idea to recheck the sealing integrity of the system again using the speed smoke. Follow this with clearing all the DTCs and then proceeding with a road test. For this example, here's the data I collected after the repair. As you can see, the boost errors are now minimal, which is what we want. Now, there may be times where you've corrected leaks, but you still have excessive boost errors. In these cases, you wanna take a close look at the wastegate control mechanisms, which include the wastegate actuator, the wastegate control rod, the wastegate lever, and the wastegate valve and seat integral of the turbocharger. On this system, the wastegate actuator diaphragm has an internal spring that holds the wastegate valve in the closed position. In this position, all of the exhaust gas is forced through the turbocharger turbine, 
which makes the turbocharger work at maximum at high exhaust flows. If this valve is not able to properly seal, the turbocharger will be in a deficient state. The failures that I've seen on these vehicles include worn linkages, wastegate shaft wear, and distorted and cracked valve seats. Now these inspections can be performed on the vehicle with a cool engine. After removing the small heat shield and the wastegate actuator rod clip, check for play. You'll also want to use the speed smoke to operate the wastegate actuator and observe movement. Then you can remove the rod from the shaft and check for smooth movement and excessive shaft play. Now, if you have a borescope and can safely remove the front air fuel ratio sensor, you can inspect the internal sealing surfaces of the wastegate valve. But you wanna make sure that you do this only on a cold engine so that you don't damage the borescope camera and lens stack. As you can see on this turbocharger, the valve seat is cracked and was the ultimate cause of the DTC P0299. GM has a bulletin that talks about small cracks as being normal and not a reason to replace a turbocharger. You'll need to use your expertise and judgment when making that call. We hope you found this video helpful and informative. If you have any questions or comments, please leave them below and thanks for watching.